This is the extra mile. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to... A couple of amateurs behind a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to... We should have dropped that one on the cutting room floor. This is the extra mile. Ah! <laughs> Let's break it down. Extra mile on three. One, two, three. Extra, Extra mile. mile. Man. All right. Well, this is seriously a podcast where we try to bring you real life while showing you how faith fits into everyday life. Are we still going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You did a great job opening us up. Sorry. Yeah. Let's, let's go again. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Extra Mile. Pour the coffee. I'm Justin. G5 is here. G5, how are you? I'm doing good. And we're always here with Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Hey. Thanks for what you do, Caleb. That was a good re-intro. Even though I give you a little bit of the of the guff, I like you a lot. <laughs> Let's pour the coffee. If this is your first time listening to Extra Mile. We are a semi-religious podcast. We like talking about the Bible, talking about godly things, and talking about real life and how those two things relate. We encourage you to like, comment, subscribe. There you go. And if you have your own coffee, drink Drink a cup with us. We hope you enjoy it. Hope you're having a good day. Yeah. Don't don't spill that, Caleb. So what's going on? Well, I traveled to Abilene on Friday night because Saturday morning. Did you like a donut? Yeah. Okay. You've been staring at him. <laughs> Careful, there's rolling things. <laughs> anyway, I traveled to um, while well, we get caffeinated and. Uh, there's sugar high. Really? Then, then unglazed? I oh, know that's that's just normal glazed. Get your cake donuts, sir. And so off we go. My nephew got married this last weekend, and it was a really great ceremony and um, a great time of celebration. And uh, I was going to go to Abilene to take my master licensing exam uh, for PSI for the state of Texas. And so. I have, the last time that I just went on a trip by myself, you know, just like, I'm going to go to this one place, grab a hotel room, get up, this is my itinerary for the next day, you know, Friday night doesn't really matter, Saturday is really important because I have to sit in front of a computer for five hours and do math, and uh, I was like, just throw caution to the wind, go to the place, find a hotel, and buy a hotel room, right? That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, because it's not the 21st century. Sure. Okay, everybody's giving me crap. I guess I have a romanticized concept about, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, rom-coms don't exist you know what? because of that reason. My life is a rom-com. <laughs> so, anyway, this comedy of errors continues on with the fact that we go to my nephew's rehearsal dinner. And we're trying to support my sister-in-law. She's giving a speech, you know, his mom. And, uh, and so she finally gives up. Uh, gives up her uh, anxiety. You know, public speaking is hard for everybody, including me. And I know you. we've talked about it a lot, how yeah. there's that buildup of nerves. And I could tell she was stalling. And I literally just said, you know what? Get up there and go and because I'm not going to leave until you get up and give your speech. And so she gets up and gives her speech. And it was really just from love. And there was, there was God and Christ inspired. And it was just a fantastic... Um, like a blessing, you know, public blessing to her son. It was beautiful. And then she sits down, and I finally go and and uh, get in the car and drive to Abilene. And uh, we get an Expedia, you know, we're looking at whatever hotel room we can get. Yeah. And Rose orders me a, an Expedia. And I finally look at the reservation, and it's a smoking room and a day's end. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, haha, you got me a smoking room. That's funny. And so when I finally get to Abilene, it's midnight. And it was just fine. I'll just, you know, get the room or whatever. And I open, you know, open the door to the room. And, and I, oh, I, at first I asked the clerk, Is there, are there any non-smoking rooms that we could change this out to? And he looks at me and goes, no. And I said, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and uh, so I go to this room. And I think the last time it had been renovated was probably 2002. And it was a smoking room, and I was uncomfortable because uh, that's me and my comedy of errors. And so I'm sitting there trying to study, and my nose is on fire, and my eyes are burning. So finally, I was looking for other hotel rooms, and there was three available at the Double Tree downtown, and they were $300 a piece. Free cookie. 
And uh, it's like, well, I don't have that kind of cash, especially after I spent, uh, you know, hundred and something dollars, hundred more like hundred twenty dollars on this day's in room. Anyway, comedy of errors. Y'all can laugh at my misfortune. I am. And so, um, anywho, I finally say, no, I'll just grin and bear it into this room, and I uh, went to sleep. Woke up early, tried to study for my test. You know, uh, just nasal cavities on fire and eyes burning just from the atmosphere and I go and I do this test and it was very intensive and something I've been studying preparing for and um, and I noticed that they gave us uh, noise canceling headphones like when you go to the gun range so I put those on and just sort of was digging the test and I started getting a headache just cracking my eyes open and just it was bad and finally I realized that the headphones were too tight which is the, the main headphones that I wear currently are these. And so these are really comfortable, and we could sit and talk for hours. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, so I took those off. My headache went away. And uh, I only passed half of these. It was two exams, and I passed the, the knowledge portion and the calculations. I missed by two points. So I was disappointed. But uh, I can retake it, and I plan to pretty soon. I just have to do some more stuff. But you passed? I passed half of it. So okay. you have to pass both sections, and I passed one. So I just have to take that second one again. Um, but it's uh, it was a little disappointing. And I, I also feel that, you know, if I had just a little bit more time to study with life and everything. And I think that's, that's really just the takeaway of, <clears throat> yeah, I should have planned a little more and gotten a better hotel room. But that was the other thing is there wasn't anything in Abilene. What was going on in Abilene last Friday? I don't Caleb. Know. He doesn't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Everybody and everybody I've told the story to, they're saying like, "What? Well, what was going on in Abilene?" I was like, well, if I had known that, I don't know. <laughs> I just was trying to go and take this test. That sounds horrible. I mean, that sounds a lot like when I was in Albuquerque. We stayed in a hotel. It was Paige had done this deal where you go online and you can. It's almost like gambling with hotel rooms, and <laughs> right. it's like, hey, you can pay this price. And it's a cheap price, and you can get, you might, you might get a really nice hotel, or you might get this express hotel by the airport in Albuquerque, New Mexico, you know, <laughs> and that's where we stayed, oh, and it was, it was, oh, it was horrible. I couldn't even sleep inside the covers. I was just like a plank on top of the <laughs> bed. I mean, just <laughs> worried someone would kill me and bugs would, like, eat me like it's a mummy, and <laughs> just. <laughs> Uh, that's a visual. Uh, it crawls up. I couldn't. Skin. I couldn't sleep at all. I was just like, oh my goodness, Albuquerque's in. Sorry, Albuquerque. But it's a nasty town. I call it Abuquayque. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to spell Albuquerque? I uh, get confused. Abuquayque. Mm. That's so disappointing. So it's the smoking. You would say is uh, really got you. It was uncomfortable, but like it, it smelled like my my grandfather's house because mm-hmm. he smoked. And so I opened the door, and it was just sense memory. And I also, um, a lot of the journeymen that I used to work for, uh, work in service call trucks and stuff like that as an electrician. They all smoked. And it was it was kind of a, a call back, I would say. I, that's, that was the, the silver lining. Um, I have started to remember that I needed to be thankful, the fact that I had a room and that I had paid for. And there was a bed, and the toilet worked, and I had a lot of blessings even though I was somewhat uncomfortable. And from there, it was, uh, I, I kind of had some sense memory going where, you know, mm-hmm. just the things around you bring up memories that you haven't thought of. So I thought of my grandfather. I thought of these journeymen that, um, you know, some of the interesting jobs that we had done. It was interesting kind of having that memory and uh, the fact that I was there to try to take this electrician's exam. Anyway, um, it's interesting how, life kind of throws that at you. And, and if I had planned and I had meticulously chosen some hotel room, uh, I wouldn't have that story. It would have just been like, yeah, I got a nice hotel room and got a, a full night's rest and I didn't have a headache when I took the exam and then I passed it. Maybe that would have been the alternate take of that story. But uh, it, was a, it was a good lesson of having everybody around me be like, oh, well, it's 2023. You don't just travel to a random city and ask for a hotel room, you, which is uh, sad that we've kind of moved past that. So how'd you get over that disappointment, though? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's about a mindset where 
I mean, I have a I have a pretty large window. I think the only the only stock that I lost was just the the cost of taking the exam. So I just have to pay that again and then do some more studying. But it was good. I got a score sheet of what I missed, and uh, I'm glad to say that the renewables I got all correct. So what I actually focus on every day, I actually was knowledgeable and able to answer those questions. Things that I've never done before, like transformers, you know, these uh, what they call separately derived devices and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, I have never touched those. I've never worked on them. I probably wouldn't if somebody was saying, hey, can you fix my secondary transformer for me? Yeah. I probably wouldn't touch it. Um, but you have to know it to pass the test. So a little more study in those areas because I just don't know them. Uh, I've never really touched them, don't really have the field experience on them. Yeah. So you can have a theoretical experience to pass the exam. And, and then You're it, talking about the different cars, right? Like Bumblebee, <laughs> the yellow car, yeah. and the, the truck. I think, <laughs> a, I think a metaphor for like the scriptures would be uh, very similar to the experience that I had. You know, because we grow up, uh, if you grow up in the church, you read the New Testament a lot, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot. And there's even people who have just the new, that you're, I keep looking at that orange uh, notebook of yours, and I think that that's a New Testament. Because it looks like that, where it's, you know, the small uh, format, and it's just the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. Yeah, like a little pocket version. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, I'm sh- those are pretty common, you know, if you haven't seen them. And I, it is interesting to only look at just the New Testament. Mm. And it, it's handy to have that in a physical copy. I mean, now we have digital versions on our phones and our tablets and our devices, but, you know, not very many years ago that if you didn't have a physical copy of the book, you didn't have it. So it makes sense. Let's just put the the, the plan to salvation, you know, and we give it to people and make it easily distributable, and we can send that over to Africa. But we really are missing the whole story. And so I would say your knowledge of the scriptures expanding into the Old Testament and seeing how God reacts with people who he's chosen, you know, the children of Israel, he chose these people because of the fathers of faith and how they generation after generation after generation, they completely reject him and all of his commandments. And he was very patient for generations and oh, yeah. finally got fed up. And that's where we, I am now in the Bible readings is Jeremiah. And I tell you what, God got fed up and led the people into captivity, but he also alludes to the coming of the Savior, the King who's coming, the Messiah. And it's cool. I've, I, you know, I've had those quotations in the New Testament. The, the, the apostles and Jesus, they quote the, the prophets a lot, Isaiah and Jeremiah. Yeah, they do. And so it's really interesting reading Jeremiah. I've never done it before. And so I would I would equate that to finding corners of the code book that you just don't interact with on a day-to-day. It's nice to branch out and, and see the whole picture. And uh, that's the end of my devotional. Um, there are a few, like, so I did Micah not too long ago, mm-hmm. if you remember, and kind of on the line of profit theme, but even I think relates to, like, your situation, whether it be you know disappointment or dealing in just not not the best circumstances, he makes a couple. I wanted to talk about this more in in my sermon, but I had to cut it because I didn't have time. Because took time. Yeah, where he has these "I am" statements, like like as for me, and he talks about a few things. Like I think one is I'm gonna have integrity, and the other one I'll wait on the Lord. I'm trying to find it. The I am statement is so interesting. What's the, do you remember what that is in the Hebrew when he says I am? Oh, yeah. Well, when God says I am, he's referring to you know he, himself, his name, essentially. That he exists. R- right. My name is I exist. <laughs> I mean, that's what it means, doesn't it? But there's so many times where we as – I mean, think about that for a second. Ah, oh, here it is. He goes – or we will say as for me – I, I am, uh-huh. um, and we will uh, make it an ego statement. Mm. It's like, oh, I, I am fill in the blank, right? Mm. I am this or that. And it's a way to, like, increase power, show others how great I am. Mm. But when God says it, it, I mean, it's literally just I am. There is no blank to be filled because he just is. He is. And 
and he takes away what we would consider an ego and, and would need, he's like, yeah, you don't, you can't rely on that. And so I think that's really cool. And so when Micah says, for example, in chapter 3, verse 8, but as for me, he goes down, he's like, this is what you're doing. This is what you, the sin that you're doing, and this is how you're living. But he's like, as for me, follow my example. I'm filled with the power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. I think I alluded to this for a second, but you know, we may not be called to tell people about their sins and, and preach, but maybe we're called you know, to do something else, but we're still called to do it with justice and, and with might. I, I think that's pretty pretty remarkable that seems to be a theme running through jeremiah too just because that's fresh on my mind you know because i'm reading those on the daily where christ christ god is telling the word of the lord which we could allude to that is christ um john tells us that the word was with god and it became flesh and dwelt among us um but that when god is saying hear the word of the lord repent he's telling the 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 kingdom of judah the chosen people of Israel, he's telling them to repent and then how to do that. And, yeah. you know, and he's, he mentions, I hate the, the unfair scales. I hate unjust weights. Like he, he hates deception. God hates deception and loves justice. And that seems to be a recurring theme that generations lose it's that you have these people who basically just take advantage of other people. And then that, that becomes so rampant. That seems to be what's happening in Jeremiah 24, that the kingdom of Judah has just descended into it's every man for himself. And it's almost like a capitalistic paradise mm -hmm. to say, you know what? I found a niche. I'm going to exploit this. I'm going to hoard all the toilet paper and sell it out of the back <laughs> of my truck. And now I have more money than everybody else. Boom. And God hates that. At least that's what I'm taking away from Jeremiah. And that is where they had gotten to right before Assyria and Babylon had come in and, and carried away everything that they had. They yeah. They plundered them. I mean, when you're living in that type of society or you're indulging in that type of sin, I'm not saying you know capitalism isn't, isn't bad, it's yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's not what we're that's saying. That's not what we're saying. But we are saying that sometimes you can fall into the trap that Satan sets up in a capitalistic society where all you do is you, you love and you obsess about money and you exploit other people. And what are you waiting for in that sense? You're waiting for that next opportunity to get more money or that next opportunity to find someone who doesn't know what they're talking about or the, you know, take advantage of someone else. And Micah tells us in Micah 7.7, 7, you know, as for me... I will look to the Lord and I will wait. I will wait for the God of my salvation by uh, my God will be near and he will hear me. And so how we wait is super important and for what we're waiting for will determine how we wait. If I'm waiting for the next opportunity to make more money and not when the Lord will return, um, wait for the God of my salvation who will hear me, it's really going to make all the difference. So mm. that's said a lot, isn't it? Wait on the Lord. Be strong and have good courage. Mm -hmm. Does that actually mean to wait, to do nothing? Well, see, this is where I think we have a misconception about what waiting means. I think we think of patience and waiting. We think, I'm just going to sit here in this waiting room. Okay, that's probably what has caused that idea. And just flip through this magazine and wait for someone to come to me. I don't think that is waiting. Um, that's just doing nothing mm. um and you can do nothing in a lot of different ways but waiting should be doing something like in the meantime mm. patience is preparing yourself for the outcome not mm. not just sitting there waiting for something to happen and so when god tells you look yeah i need you to be patient about this you know I, you, you notice that there's something in your life that you know, you've been really wanting and, you know, you, you feel God calling your heart and you're reading his word. He's like, look, I need you to be patient. He, he's wanting you to prepare for that thing. He's wanting you to prepare for a certain outcome, whether it be that thing or not, actually. But but to actually work on yourself, that's what that patience means. So the license exam, it's not just going to come. 
I have to work for it. Right, right. But that's that's a poor example to say, you know, you've got a maybe your job is changing or that that's the points of instability in life. When last I was changing career jobs, you want some more yeah. coffee? Uh, yeah. Actually. When last I was uh, changing careers, um, that was hard because you didn't know what you were going to do the next day. What what does tomorrow bring? You don't know, and so that level of uncertainty, uh, it can be unsettling, and to be able to wait, I guess. I mean, you can also freeze up too you know but then you have to take action and go search yeah. for jobs so that that, that door will open that's why micah here micah you know three eight and seven seven need to be combined because he's like as for me i have you know justice and i have might and as for me i'm gonna wait on the lord i mean those two things need to go together so i'm, I'm waiting and i'm practicing justice and i might and it goes along with micah six eight where he says he has told you Right? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with you, God. So you need to be doing those th- those things as you wait patiently. We as a culture today, when we, th- when we wait patiently, we just sit on our hands and, and we d- really do nothing. And that's, that's really sad. Either we're crippled by something or we don't know what to do, and we're just waiting for the next thing. Or right. we're super impatient, and we try to do too much. Our, we're overwhelmed with everything that we're supposed to be doing, and we don't know what to do. Hmm. I think that's really well said. I've, I've never really considered that as a point. It, it did strike to memory First Thessalonians chapter 4, and this is something that we can do to take action. And it's what we're working toward, goals as a Christian. And so, you know, if you aren't necessarily a a follower of Christ, that this is what we are striving toward, the instruction we get from the Apostle Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, finally then, brethren, so finally being the end of his, uh, what he's ultimately saying, this is a conclusion. Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. So I guess to your point, we can't just sit idly and wait for God to take us to our eternal yeah. rest, to be with him, that we have to keep working, that you excel still more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. And sanctification in the New American Standard, it, it could read your becoming holy that God wants us to become holy. That is, you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no man transgress and defraud his brother. That's Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Don't lie and don't cheat each other, that your heart is pure, that no man transgress And defraud his brother in the matter, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things. Just as we also told you before and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but in sanctification. So he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. And so that's what we're searching for, is purity of heart. Taking action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, we uh, we definitely need to be a people of action because we we actually worship and and live for a God of action too, and and He's He's working, and we need to be working as well. And uh, things aren't just static and just going by. We need to yeah excel still more, to do more and more. So go out. And be inspired to do something kind for somebody. Be inspired to share a kind word or help somebody out uh, who might be needing it mm-hmm. and try to identify those, to identify those things and work toward your purification and your sanctification. And don't be idle. Yeah, I mean, and if you're you know, studying for a test or you're just in an uncomfortable situation and you want to get out, there is a way out. You need to be patient. 
take a second, step back, assess, ask God for help, and then take action in that sense, preparing yourself for the, the possible foreseeable outcome. And take action and get your hotel room early. Yeah, yeah, do do that. That's go my, go on the internet. That's my and, proof. <laughs> and and you'll have a better outcome. Speaking of the internet, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Turn back on and splash it in. Okay, I'm back. Go so. <laughs> if you want to know more about the Bible or you have any questions, our email is in the description below. You can DM us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're looking for a church family or you're in the Lubbock area, we invite you to come visit and hang out with us in Milwaukee. We love for you to find a church who practices the love of Christ.